Have you been to RonaMatters.com today? Today I'm here to answer 15 gay questions. We're going to jump right into the video. The first question is, is there a sexual fetish that turns you off? And you know, thinking about this really wasn't difficult because there's only one thing that I know for sure that you got not to get me to do because that is nasty as hell. And that's like, what do people get out of like sticking their whole hands up somebody's butt? I think it's called ain't no fisting like you know you're not i like to keep myself tight keep it right you know and i don't want you sticking your whole like you okay this skin on my nerves okay like when you get to like oh girl i'm gonna have to i think i came to the wrong party no let me um i got somewhere to go right quick i need to see you next week um the second question is what gay stereotype annoys you most? And you know, there's something about people like the really bangy boys who like buy, uh, well they don't buy anything. They steal clothes from Walmart, Rainbow, Charlotte, which like all those little basic women's stores. And, like they wear yarn dress, like you can go to Hobby Lobby, Michaels and things, like you can get like yarn and like somehow you attach it to your real hair, like make it like you have dreads, like you can get like black and red right here and then you get yellow and green and like get the whole rainbow like match your outfit and just something about those types of gay people really annoy me like the low budget queens really <sighs> I mean like you should want better for yourself I mean like you work at like Captain D's for like 17 an hour and like your your life is like going to the club like how much money you can how many hours you can work in captain d's so you can be able to like buy yarn for your hair and steal clothes from rainbow it, it just has to be a better life it has to be um have you ever hooked up with someone based off the proximity to your phone like rinder adam for adam radar etc um i don't know how many of you have seen my grinder blues video but yeah, I really, even when I was out of town at Gay Pride and wanted to like hook up with people off ground, I, nobody was really biting back. So no, I haven't hooked up with anybody. What is the best gay film ever made? Mm, I want to say the movie Brother to Brother was a really good one. Dirty Laundry was a really good one but i've really been into gay documentaries i don't know the best gay film ever made i can't pick just one but i'm really into like documentaries like eight the mormon proposition what are some other documentaries i can't think of any off the top of my head it's really bad but soldier's girl i know i can watch soldier's girl it's a, a story i talked about it in my um gay themed movies everyone should see the it's so far it's a two-part series as of the time i'm filming this um, I talked about Soldier's Girl. You should definitely see this about a, a guy off at an infantry soldier who's somewhere at a boot camp and he, they go to the club and he falls in love with this transsexual, but he doesn't know what's a transsexual. He thinks it's a real woman, but then she tells him. And yeah, so that movie is really, it's a drama. It's not a comedy. It's a really serious love story about a American soldier falling in love with a woman. Um, so that's my vote for that. How long have you been out and who was the hardest person to tell? Um, I've never really had a closet. Yeah, so, but I thought that I should like formally come out to, to one person and that's my cousin. Um, so we were in college. I was a freshman at the university, well, the local university. I'm not going to tell you where. We were staying in the dorm. I was in the boy dorm. She was in the girl dorm, like right next door. And so I had called her over, I had ordered pizza, I had walked to Blockbuster and got a movie because I didn't have a car. And you know, like, I was trying to be really grand and really fancy. And I was like, well, you know, cousin, I think it's time that I tell you that, like, I'm gay. And she was like, what? Like, I've been new there. Like, what are you talking about? Like, I've been seeing you hanging out with this person i won't say his name she's like i've been seeing you hanging out with him and i know like y'all are like really too close to just be friends i mean given my cousin has five brothers she could tell but you know uh, she's like yeah i've been in there like is that why you did all this fancy stuff and i was just like i just felt so dumb because i had really prepared a form of coming out for one person in the whole world and it just really was like pointless the next question is who's your gay hero my gay hero, I don't really 
think I have one. Which, no, I really do appreciate RuPaul for what he did for the gay community. Even though he claims he's not gay, he's married with children and blah, blah, blah. As if that affects who you have sex with on the side. But, you know, like back in 1988 when he was dancing on tables and the early 90s when he was on Donahue, Sally Jesse Raphael, Jenny Jones, Ricky Lake, you know, RuPaul really brought gay people to, like, mainstream TV. So, and now he's on RuPaul's Drag Race, so, you know, big things for gay people. So, I, I really appreciate what RuPaul did for gay people. Um, and what about the U.S. soldiers who have been discharged on the Don't Ask, Don't Tell, and all the people who, you know, all the people who want to fight for our country, but our country was telling them to, like, well, you can do it only if you like coaching. I mean, like, that's just really dumb. But, um, yeah, so I don't really have a specific gay hero, but, you know, I'm a true, I'm, thank RuPaul for what he did and all the soldiers who've been discharged on the Don't Ask, Don't Tell because I think even though people say Bill Clinton was the best president since um, Hot Water Cornbread, somehow we let Don't Ask, Don't Tell get signed into law under his name. Um, have you ever turned down a guy based solely off what he was wearing? You know, I can admit that I've been, even though I don't like the Benji girls, I've been to their club and they get down. They have a great time. Um, even the men who love them, they have a great time. But when you, when I know like you like Benji, gay people, and you want to sit up and try to like me, no, it doesn't work. I will entertain you while we're at the club. If you see me online on the gay dating websites next week, I'll say, oh yeah, you're the guy I saw at the club. But I mean like, so I don't know if that's based on like, what he was wearing, but they usually don't have on anything that, you know, cause I think your style says a lot about who you are as a person. Like if you just wear your dreads and Captain D's um, polos and khakis all the time, then it means clearly you don't think much about life. But, but you know, there are people who do those things to get to where they have to go to the next step. And maybe I just feel, I'm very selective and I just feel like you aren't where you need to be in your life to where you can provide for me because you're still working on yourself. I've turned down, I've honestly turned down a guy or two because I feel like you're not where you need to, I want, I love you enough to where I feel like you need to work on you before you try to date me because I, I'm a bit much and I don't want to interrupt. Yeah, I don't want to sound mean, but yeah, I've turned down a guy or two based on what they're wearing because they need to get themselves together before they can do anything with me. Um, is it okay for a straight man to ask a gay man for fashion tips? Sure, so you can avoid getting turned down at the club or getting turned down at the, the local gas station or, you know, just because men know what men like best. I mean, I know what I want to see my man in and if I can tell your style, you know, I can recommend a few things. So, sure, it's okay. If gay marriage were legal, would you tell the not? Um, why wouldn't I tell the not? Straight people have already have the divorce rate at 49%. And y'all are allowing people like Britney Spears to get married for 56 hours. Kim Kardashian to get married for 72 days. But somehow I'm going to ruin the sanctity of marriage by marrying the man of my dreams. I don't really know where y'all get this from. Y'all can keep this shit. But yes, to answer the question, if gay marriage were legal, I would get married. Would you circumcise your son? Is this really much to think about? I mean, like, people say, like, I don't know, but yes, I would circumcise my child because men that aren't circumcised face a lot of criticism. You know, we're already gay. Like, oh my God, you're uncut. Ugh, that means you're not clean. And that really would bother me. I don't really want my child to have to face that stigma. You know, like, I, I would feel, I would some kind of way feel really bad because, like, I couldn't, like, keep my ears pierced. And I'm like, after you get it circumcised, then you have to, like, put a Medicaid ointment on it for like six weeks or something and I couldn't even do that to my ear for six days but if it's going to bring my child a better life to circumcise him and go and put the little ointment on it then I'm going to do my best I'm going to call my friends like girl make sure you remind me to like put this ointment on my child at 10 30 because I'm, I have to do it I have to do it my child can got to have a better life um let's see do you think you'll regret being gay 
I'm on the right track, baby. I was born this way. You know, like, I feel like I was born gay. So I don't really think, why would I regret something that I was born with? I mean, I've met a couple of people who have been who decided that they want to try men because some woman broke their heart or because the church did them wrong or, you know, I've turned out a couple of them. But, you know, like, I feel like I was born this way, so I don't know why I would want to regret being what I was born with. It's like, would I regret being born with these arms or would I regret being born with this? I mean, I was born with it. You just have to embrace it, move on. There's other things in life to worry about. Um... How long has your longest gay relationship been? Um, I didn't really come out until I uh, started making friends and dating until I get turned 18, 19 years old. And like 99.8% of those people I'm still friends with. So like a lot of people I met in 05, a lot of people I met in 06, even people I met like 08, I mean, I'm still friends with all those people. So I guess I want to say like, since 05, since 06, since I've met them, I mean, I don't really have arguments over sleeping with people's mans or stealing their money or stealing stuff at their house. I don't do shit like that. So, I mean, I don't really have those problems. So, yeah, I guess since the, the, who, who was it that I met? So, I've been friends with them. What's your favorite gay TV shows? Hmm. I really want to say I like Noah's Ark because like back in, back when I first came out and I bought the episodes on DVD because I couldn't watch them on TV because I was sitting in the dorm and of course they didn't have the gay channel. I really appreciated seeing people like me on TV so I really loved Noah's Ark when I first saw it but like I th it was sometime recent I tried to put in I tried to watch it again, and like I really didn't get the same feeling from the episodes, because like I have Noah's Ark season one and two on my computer, I have them on DVD, and I have the movie on DVD. But you know, like, I try to rewatch some of those things, and I don't get the same feeling. But the DL Chronicles, I can watch that forever. The DL Chronicles, I can watch that forever. And um, another gay TV show. Does RuPaul's Drag Race count as a gay TV show? If they can't say it, yeah. Um, the next question says, what non-gay issue are you most passionate about? Believe it or not, I was actually homeless for a little while as a toddler, and sometimes in my dreams, I have, I have, I, recoll I recollect memories of things that happen, like sleeping at bus stops and being outside of stores begging for change. You know, things like that. I really think back to things like that. Oh, excuse me, I have dreams about homeless people and it really bothers me. I will give you, like, the last. If I'm walking down the street and you ask me, can you have some money, I really feel bad about people who are homeless and asking for money. And I know that some people are really faking. They say you can, like, stand on the side of the highway and make $40 a day. Um, I don't know if that's enough to live off of, but people make $40 a day standing on the side of the road. Um, but, yeah, that really bothers me. Homeless people really bother me. I, I really hate to see that. And I know you didn't ask, but a gay issue that I'm really passionate about is the people over in Africa. Did you know that in some countries over in Africa, you can be sentenced to death for being homosexual? They, I don't know why people would do that. And there's actually one story in the news now that um, in Cameroon, where the first season went of America's, I mean, RuPaul's Drag Race, um, in Cameroon, this lesbian girl was cheating on her husband with another woman, and somehow this third woman wanted to join in on the lesbianism, and once they told her no, then she ran and told the, the married woman's husband, and so the husband went and told the police, and now all three of the women are facing up to five years in jail just for practicing homosexuality. Like, it's not practice. You put your fingers in coochie like this, and the girl gets off on it, or you lick it on something, whatever they do. I don't really but how can you go to jail for being who you are, for liking what you like? You can actually go to jail for liking what you like, not harming anybody, trying to bring somebody some pleasure. You can go to jail for that. That really bothers me. And um, there's this guy named David Cato over in Uganda. He was actually 
beat to death because he was a gay activist. He was fighting for rights for people over in Africa. I don't know if you check out the Black Gay History post on RonaldMatters.com, which you know you should definitely check those out. And I, one, I tell the story where David Cato was murdered. They published his name in the newspaper along with some other gay homosexuals. They say if you find, if you see these people, you must bring them to justice because they are a, a terrorist threat to our nation. And I was like, because someone's gay, they're a threat to the whole Africa's the nation, the whole, I mean like, do you know how many black people will like leave, Ob even Obama will come join us and go over there to Africa, and you know like make peace if there was a, something wrong with Africa, so. But yeah, so they found David Cato, beat him to death, and his funeral, there's footage from his funeral in the Black Gay History Month post, and you have to see it. There's a pastor officiating, and then he was like, David Cato was a good man, but he doesn't condone being gay. And then he goes on this rant and decides that he can't officiate the funeral no more. So David Cato's friends take his body from where the funeral was being held and walked to David Cato's burial and buried him themselves because nobody would like bear I mean, this for like for liking what he likes. Just imagine like being sentenced to death because you like ketchup or because you like. A, look, a dash of salt on your collard greens. I mean, that's just really dumb to me. Um, what is your advice to gay teens? Be yourself. Do do what makes you happy. I feel like I did that. I, I never really had a closet to come out of. But when it comes to being happy, doing what makes you happy, I feel like I always make that one of my top priorities. I mean, I might want to go get the new J's. It's like, you know, I might want to go get the new something, but a bill is due. But, you know, other than that, I do what makes me happy. I do what makes me happy. I do my work, and in my personal time, I do what makes me happy. So, do what makes you happy. If you feel like you need to come out the closet, if you feel like you need to wear a rainbow bracelet every day to make yourself happy, if you feel like you need to wear a necklace that reminds you of something, if you feel like you need to come out the closet, do it. Be happy. There's nothing more precious than sanity. There's nothing. You're going to go crazy. You could kill, just imagine you go kill yourself because of what someone else thinks of you. And not because you just feel like, not because of a reason of your own. I, I don't see me killing myself because someone doesn't like me or because other people aren't happy with who I am. Be yourself. Make yourself happy. I think that's what one of the great journeys of our time on this earth will be is, can, do you really know what happiness is? And of course you don't go to heaven if you commit suicide. I don't know if you believe in God. I don't know who's watching this. But yeah, you should definitely make yourself happy. Um, yeah. And I don't want to use the corny phrase that gets better, but make yourself happy. And that concludes my video. 15 gay questions. If you have questions that you would like answered in my next video, um, type them down as a comment down below. How do you all feel about my answers to the 15 questions? Follow me on Twitter at Rona Matters. You can send questions there. Um, check out RonaMatters.com. Subscribe if this is your first time. You know I have to do all this promotion at the end of the video. But yeah, thank you all for watching.